Nice infield pass. Here's Tyler Aldron. Leonard Brown turns it back to Aldron. Another brilliant try. The bounce going to do Bayani. Has it. Oh, getting through there, trying to rip it away. Oh, brilliantly done by Lachlan Boschia. Well, how good was that? Looking to get back on level terms. Welcome back uh, to the Canadian Rock. We're excited this edition. As you heard probably in the intro, we got three people on. We've got a nice quarantine roundtable today. We've got uh, three members of the Chiefs Rugby from Super Rugby down in New Zealand. We've chatted with uh, Tyler Arjun of Team Canada, the Canada Canadian captain. Uh, he was on before, he's on again, and he promises to be on once more after this. We also have Lachlan Bogier, uh, super, super intelligent guy, great tackler, great at poaching balls. And we also have Sam Kane. Sam, if you might not have uh, realized within the last 24 hours, was just uh, elected captain of the famous All Blacks. So this is, this is a very exciting day for Canadian Ruck, and uh, hopefully you enjoy this uh, podcast as much as I enjoyed chatting with these gentlemen. As always, you need to contact us. We're on a few different spots, Twitter at Canadian Rock, Instagram, the underscore Canadian underscore Rock, Facebook at the Canadian Rock, and email the Canadian Rock at gmail.com. You can watch, listen, follow, and subscribe to any of our platforms. We're on YouTube, we're on Spotify and iTunes, we're on Google Play and Google Podcasts, and of course, CastBox. So thank you very much for those who listen and follow. Uh, it's been great, great having these conversations. Shout out to Jim, the Butcher Che. He, uh, he reached out to me the other day uh, saying he's enjoying the podcast. I coached Jim a few years ago in rugby. Um, so it's nice to hear those stories of, of uh, the old guys that I used to coach and play with following along in this journey. So what's been going on? What's been some rugby news? And I imagine most of you have already heard that Sir Bill Beaumont was reelected to be the world rugby chairman again. Uh, so he just finished his four years. He was going up against Augustine Pichot and I was a, I was a fan of what Pichot was, uh, was selling. I, I still think that he could make a great chairman at some point in his career, very passionate about the game, some really interesting ideas as to how to make it accessible, how to make it um, better moving forward. But listening to Bill on the rugby pod uh, podcast out of, out of the UK, he, I, I got to admit, he he wasn't really uh, he wasn't really opening up prior to the vote, so I wasn't really sure some of his stances. But he made some really interesting ideas and put some really great ideas forward, especially on player safety and welfare, which I think can't be understated. So very good for that uh, on that, sir. Safety is obviously the one of the key factors with rugby. Uh, it's what makes us a little bit different than other sports, is because we take safety seriously, especially concussion management and protocols. Uh, personally, I believe that rugby leads the way in concussion management and how we look after things. Um, he also spoke, Sir Bill also spoke about game time, um, you know, how long these scrums are taking and things like that. And is there a way to, to speed it up? Or is there a way to change how those, uh, those scrums are impacting the, the length of games? And he also likes the idea of uh, really just eliminating tier one and tier two and just making it all one thing. I'm not sure if that's good or not. I know a lot of people will argue that it is. Uh, I guess I look at something like the world championships in hockey. There's, you know, three or four different levels, depending on where you're ranked in the world. Would that be something that's good for world rugby? Why not? You know, you could have two or three different world cups. You get your tier one, tier two, tier three, or your A division, your B division, C division, what have you. Uh, there's lots of, lots of different ways you could look at it. You could, uh, involve more clubs, more countries in the national game, trying to, you know, vying for some type of uh, world championship, relegation issues, uh, people, you know, clubs bouncing up, things like that. I think there's a lot of ways I could look at. So uh, let's let's hope Bill does a good job. I, I think after listening to him on the rugby pod, he's got some really good ideas. So hopefully his next, four, his next four years goes well and he's able to implement some change for the betterment of the game. So Let's stay positive thinking about rugby. I know everybody misses it, but there's lots of places you can watch some old matches. You know, YouTube, other other videos channels have games showing all the time. 
lots of places to get your rugby fix. Um, as much as I miss it, I feel bad for the, uh, for the players uh, that, that aren't able to play right now that are, you know, twiddling their thumbs and like, what can, what can we do? You know, this is their job. I know everybody's not sure of what's going to happen when the quarantine's over, how long this is going to last. Um, but for those athletes, uh, for the, for the fans watching those players, it's, uh, you have to feel for those guys because they're losing some of their prime years of playing. And that's what we we kind of get to now is, uh, I was fortunate enough a couple of weeks ago to chat with these three lads and it was, it was an entertaining, you know, 45, 50 minutes, uh, good humored, good natured, very, uh, very much open into, you know, going anywhere the conversation would lead. And you can tell the three of these guys get along quite well on and off the pitch. Uh, you know, the, the bantering back and forth, the, the joking around with each other. It was, it was fun to watch. Uh, but it was, a, it was a pleasure to have on Sam Kane. As I said, just, you know, mere 24 hours ago, roughly, he was named the All Blacks captain. And uh, he's falling along lines. I mean, just the last couple have been, you know, Kieran Reed and, and Richie McCaw. So he's got some big shoes to fill. But I think he has the leadership and the grit he, uh, to, to be able to do that. He's a, he's a vicious tackler. He plays hard. He plays gritty uh, with the Chiefs and with the All Blacks. And uh, I think you'll enjoy what he has to bring to the, bring to the conversation today. And we also have Lachlan Bozier, uh, Mr. Turnover, I guess is what they're calling him this year. He's pushing for a spot on the All Blacks. And, uh, you know, he probably was pushing his way there with how well he was playing. Uh, hopefully hopefully, COVID-19 stops and we get a chance to see him in that famed black jersey. Uh, he goes by the nickname Bobby. Uh, quite a funny story. It's not really told throughout the video, but maybe we'll bring that up another time. And then, of course, Ardrin, Captain Canuck. Um, not sure if many of you know, but uh, in the fall, he was touring with Barbarians and he actually got to room with Rory Best. And it was a bit of a setup for him as Rory uh, captain one week. And uh, the next week they tapped Ardron and said, we want you to be captain. So that was, uh, that was really cool. Uh, he's been off hunting right now. He sent me a few pictures of his, uh, of his uh, red deer that he, that he had killed down in uh, New Zealand. It is massive. It makes the deer here in Canada look like they're, you know, little puppy dogs, but this, this thing is huge. So we're hoping he's going to be back on again soon with a couple other, a couple of others, uh, of others lads, but sit back and enjoy. These guys are, true stewards of the game. Um, you know, I brought up the, the, uh, the vote between Sir Bill Beaumont and Gus Pichot and, you know, asked their thoughts and Kane's like, you know, we're players. We're, that's not something we think about. We, we just want to play. We want to, we want to get on the pitch and do our thing. And we hope that the, the powers to be make those right decisions. And, you know, he's right. That's something that you don't really think about. He doesn't, you know, the players don't have a say in who gets voted in. It, it comes from the, from the national reps. So, that was interesting to hear, but on and off the field, these guys are class acts, all of them high IQ, high rugby IQ, very smart, very brainy. Uh, and you can tell the three of them have a lot of passion for the game. Um, I like to think I know my rugby and, you know, most people I talk to, I, I've, uh, I can have a really good conversation with them about the game. Um, but listening to these three go back and forth, you know, especially the two of them that have grown up in New Zealand in that rugby culture, you, you can tell their, their, their thought on rugby is a little bit different and higher up than, than mine or, you know, Canadians. And uh, it was definitely, definitely interesting to, to be part of that conversation. I hope you enjoy it because it was, uh, it made my night. It made my week. Uh, one of the highlights of my uh, podcasting career, if not anything I have to do with rugby, but uh, sit back, enjoy, and uh, let's go for a little ride together, crack a beer, and uh, let's see where the story goes. All right, welcome, uh, welcome back to the Canadian Ruck. Uh, talking today with uh, some Super Rugby players uh, from the Chiefs who are having a great season until COVID uh, stepped in. Uh, I got Tyler Archer back on, a uh, local boy from Canada. We've got Sam Kane who uh, plays low with the All Blacks, and Lachlan Bozier, um, all loose forwards and uh, front five a little bit, I guess, for the Chiefs. Um, thanks very much for coming on, guys. Really appreciate you uh, you being here with me tonight. Yeah, no worries, Jamie. Thanks for having us. <laughs> having us. So let's jump right in here. We've got uh, we've got a few things in world rugby right now. Even though there's um, there's some downtime, a uh, big thing that I've been following is Augustin, uh, Augustine Augustine Pichot is running for the World Rugby Chairman. Um, I think this would be great for the game globally. 
Uh, he's younger, he's got some great ideas, and he's trying to look at the sport globally, holistically, as opposed to centered in, you know, possibly Europe. Um, does this affect you guys much? Like, how do you guys see this playing out? Does it help New Ze rugby players in New Zealand? Is it great for the game globally, or is it, uh, does it really matter to you guys? Look, if I'm completely honest, um, as rugby players, we're not too um, invested in what's going up. Uh, you know the higher levels of the game once we decide what happens but um, look I know he was a, a cheeky halfback back in his day so uh, it'll be interesting to, to see what he could bring to the table uh, and I think if we look at it from a New Zealand point of view uh, and the way that uh, or the fact that we've been travelling to Argentina and playing there um, he it's probably, I'd say he's an advocate for the way the Southern Hemisphere play the game. Then, um, you know, good, good on. But um, I, I can't really comment too much about it because I haven't looked into it too deeply. That's fair. Yeah, I haven't really looked into it either, but I know like New Zealand's quite good um, with spreading the game. And if you look at the Maori All Blacks, and uh, I think they had like a New Zealand 15 planning to come over and play in Vancouver, that sort of thing. They're actually pretty invested in growing the game. Uh, probably because the All Blacks brand is so strong. So I think something like that is is uh, is probably something that New Zealand would be on board with, whereas being uh, playing in Europe for years, I know they're much more interested in, in their own and, and not really reaching out. They're a bit more worried about losing some of the power they have. So I would say most of the, well, from my experience, New Zealand is probably one of the more on-board countries with it. That's good. Yeah, I, I think so as well. Um World uh, World Rugby's just said that they're going to give out $100 million U.S. in global aid to uh, to help professional sides and, and nations during COVID-19. Does that impact you guys any as uh, as players for the Chiefs? Are you guys financially okay? Are you taking pay cuts? Does does this help your clubs? Does this help your professional sides? Uh, look, I think we're we're pretty fortunate um, here in New Zealand. Uh, the game's pretty strong and financially the reasonably stable. Um, you know, the New Zealand rugby is definitely taking a, a major, a major hit, as um, as I think most countries are. But I think we're in a better position than a, a lot of others are, just from um, communication that we've had. So, look, yeah, we're definitely taking a pay cut, um, and but we're. We're wanting to do what's best for the game and make sure that our clubs can stay afloat and that we've um, you know, got clubs to play for next year. So I think the fact that um, World Rugby is putting that money out, I hope it just goes to the places that it's needed the most. That's, I think that's a great answer. I think when you think of rugby, you think of New Zealand. And New Zealand, in my mind, has always looked at the game as holistically as possible to try and make sure, you know, everybody gets a fair stake. And uh, sometimes I, I think a lot of the other countries in the world don't do that. So that's that's great. Uh, I had asked this to Tyler last time we chatted, but the Rugby Club World Cup uh, is something that's kind of being bandied about. Um, right now, if this was to happen, the Chiefs would be in this you know global tournament. Have you guys read up on this? Have you had any thought into, you know, how cool this could be? Or is this just something that it's another another thing that would be too taxing on the body with long seasons and international play and stuff like that? Yeah, I, I haven't heard, heard too much about it, but um, it would obviously be a cool cool sort of concept. But how that fits in yeah, with the usual rugby schedule, I don't know. But, um, yeah, it's definitely a cool concept of playing sort of European teams and, and whatnot, but yeah, I'm not too not too sure how they would put it on. Tyler, you played on both sides of the world. What do you reckon? How would it work? Yeah, well, yeah, I, I was answered it last time, but I think it'd be sweet. It's just it we would probably kind of it would kill minor ten rugby, I think, in in New Zealand because you'd probably have to play your Super Rugby to find the top teams or whoever's going to go and then play in a World League. But frig, it'd be, it'd be unreal, especially if they could split the, the profits and the money across all of them. Like, I don't think many Kiwis would be going overseas anymore because playing rugby here is more fun than anywhere I've ever played. And yeah, I think the main reason anyone leaves, a, a bit of life experience, but mainly for the, 
the bigger money. So I, it would keep a lot of the best Kiwis in the country. It'd be pretty, pretty cool. What about like logistically? How it would be a lot more travel with time away from home? I don't know. What do you like? I reckon it would probably just be kind of similar to um, to Super Rugby, like how it was a few years before I came. Or you go, to, you think you guys used to go to South Africa for like three or four weeks at a time or something? Yeah. I don't know if you because I'm trying to think if you had how many teams was it twenty teams? Twenty teams, yeah. Play. Yeah, I don't really know what. So what would that mean? You might need to play, like. Nine, nine games on the road, ten at home, or vice versa. So you do like, yeah, have four week. Uh, I don't know. Well, I guess you'd, you'd also have your teams in your own, yeah. like in Australia yeah. and New Zealand. Right, so yeah, maybe. What's that? You're right. It wouldn't be too bad. <laughs> so, would you play yeah. Super Rugby in the global? Is that how it or no Super Rugby at all? Okay, I, I don't know, I you'd have to have Super Rugby, wouldn't you? Because, like, how do you pick who the, the teams are that should participate in? It would kind of, like, uh, the idea that, from what I read, it would be like, you know, how the Heineken Cup or, like, that European Championship works where they bring those three leagues together and you have to be in the top the year before. Oh, yeah. And you sort of pools, wouldn't you? You wouldn't play round once, would you? Oh, yeah, I you suppose that's true. Yeah, you wouldn't even. You'd, just, you'd, you'd probably pool. play. Yeah. If that's the case, you could probably squeeze maybe one or two more Super Rugby teams out in New Zealand, I reckon. Yeah, that's actually true. It'd be pretty awesome to see. I'm a, I, I love watching Super Rugby. I think you guys would, I think you guys would dominate myself. But um, it's, uh, it would be, it'd be interesting from a fan's perspective. That's for sure. Uh, just to see how the, how the leagues all match up. Um, so, so if you guys get a chance, sign up and even make it a go for a year or two and see how, it, see how it plays out. <laughs> Um, speaking so of you saying, Tyler, like they, they play um, a lot of the, the territory set piece game, like due to the weather a little bit, not just mindset. So um, you're right, it would be interesting depending on where the games were played, the style of rugby that was implement, implemented. Yeah, that would be the crazy thing to see. Like you play it, like I'm trying to like a team like the Saracens or something, you keep winning it. It tends to be like in crappy rainy weather and they're pretty much any time they're in their own half, they just box kick and pressure. And they try to get a cheeky little try out of it and then leave. Whereas like if they kept kicking us the ball, that we would want to run as much as we can. And if it's nice and sunny and warm, we'd probably have like guys uh, like big gym back there carving them up. But then shit, if, if it's like wet and crappy, their style could be, yeah, it'd be, it'd be friggin' interesting to see. If they brought some of those like 130 kilo packs over here they might struggle a bit to run around that's fair <laughs> um the other thing i've been reading on is this this is affects the, the three of you guys for sure but um with covid slowing down i think um there's talk about potentially having the rugby championship and super rugby either happening at the same time uh or like inter-country play only uh is that news down there for you guys or is that just something that you know, gets kind of pushed to the outer rims of uh, the Southern Hemisphere to find out so that we know what's going on. Do you guys care? Like, how does – rugby championship, obviously, is an amazing event, but super rugby events, you know, are very amazing as well. So what would you guys like to see as players? Oh, look, we'd like to keep it as it is, but I think we're pretty restricted by what the government decides, really. Um, and at the moment, it's hard to imagine the borders here in New Zealand opening up in the next couple of months. Um, look, I think if if they do and there's other borders open, I'm pretty sure New Zealand rugby will be very open to trying to get some an all black team fielded and get some of those test matches going. Um, but really it's just down to um, the government's restrictions. If if the borders stay closed then uh, and as soon as we can get back playing rugby, we'll be looking at probably playing like a super rugby type comp and then maybe um, what we call might attend like the provincial competition. Um, yeah. So what are you guys doing to stay in, you know, game ready, I guess? Tyler's doing his yoga sessions <laughs> and posts line. What do you boys have there? You, you've got a good little weight set up. You had, uh, you had that like squat rack bench and everything, watt bike, treadmill. 
Yeah, about a year or so ago. Just uh, actually, when I hurt my neck, you know, I knew a bit of a long road back. Um, I bought a wee home gym set up. Um, nothing too flash, but it's everything, everything that you need. Um, and then we've been running the roads a wee bit to try and keep fit as well. Just been pretty hard on the joints and, and muscles after you. used to running around on, on grass. What about you, Tyler? You got a pretty sweet set up there, Tyler. Yeah, we stopped. Golden. Yeah, we got pretty lucky. We went, went down, Kristen, the lady I'm living with, she works at Hamilton Boys. So we went and like hammered that school with all the gym equipment. We brought like a ute and a uh, trailer, filled it up, got like tons. The only thing we couldn't get is a squat rack, but like, got, like hex bar and all that kind of stuff. Bench are you allowed, press, to, are you allowed to steal from a school? <laughs> nah, it's bar up. Fun. You're allowed to borrow. <laughs> borrow, okay. <laughs> Yeah, I'll give it back one day. But yeah, we got that, like a rowing machine, and then a decent, well, you guys got lots of land there too, but decent bit of land. I don't know, I've been like hammering like CrossFit workouts and stuff lately, just kind of getting into that, because I was, I was just sick of rugby weightlifting and stuff. Yeah. Same hey, you've been going for you, you guys could do some contact with each other at least. Tackle practice out backyard or something. Yeah, but- we could, but we haven't yet. We'll, um, <laughs> You're still getting we'll leave that, but we get closer to playing. I think <laughs> sort of good just to um, get the body sort of freshened up a little bit. Sort of yeah, bit of an off season sort of thing. Still working hard in the gym and on in the um, conditioning, but yeah, the body's sort of just taking relax, not getting beaten up all the time. It's good. That's good. Yeah, these boys are too busy. They've been they've been fishing a lot lately, so. You're hunting, so. <laughs> no, I'm not allowed. I can't, I can't go hunting. I'm hunting, hunting rabbits as far as I can get. Are you guys allowed to be out fishing? No, nah, it's a bit of a. Uh, <laughs> we we made a we made a video. It's on uh, it's on my Instagram actually. We just um, had a bit of a laugh. And pretended to go fishing in a trough, which is like a hundred meters from my house. Um, and yeah, we caught a big fish in there. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the um, I've got the Isolation Nation. It's like a I don't know. Is it Sky Sports that run? Who runs Isolation Nation? Do you guys know? Yeah, yeah, the Sky Sports. Got it. Yeah, I've got that this week. So <laughs> I've got some interesting videos <laughs> they've asked for. <laughs> I had it last week. Yeah. Did you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> When does when does yours come out? Or is, has it happened? Yeah, it came out on Sunday, so it'll be airing again tonight. It's every Sunday and Wednesday at the moment. Okay, yeah. So, <laughs> there's some some quality stuff they want. Yeah, unfortunately, we don't get that over here in Canada. Send me some uh, highlights if you can. Uh, Sam, a few minutes ago, you spoke about rehabbing from your neck injury. Walk us through that. It's a you know broken neck is a pretty traumatic thing but you know you, you rehabbed you came back as strong as ever uh, walk, walk us through that a little bit if you wouldn't mind uh, yes it was October 2018 um, we played in South Africa in Pretoria uh, it was early in the second half I just went to clean out um, Francois Lowe at a ruck um, I sort of had anticipated that he was going to jack Will Bourne. I'd sort of gone in extra hard and um, just at the last second managed to, his body got twisted around from some, one of our other players cleaning him out. And so the hole that I was aiming to put my head sort of between his, around his torso, um, his hip just made direct contact with the top of my head. Um, but at the time, um, to be honest, I think I can cast a little bit. Um, so I was a little bit dazed, um, had pins and needles down my um, right side of my arm and then that subdued and sort of walked off um, in a bit of pain but knowing I probably wasn't going to be back that game um, and then the medical staff insisted I went to the hospital and it was probably about 15 minutes after I got off the field that I really knew something wasn't right. Um, I was in a lot of pain on that uh, hospital, in that ambulance to the hospital. 
still not for one moment do you consider that you've broken your neck you know it's no you don't know what it feels like unless you've done it and um, how are you how are you supposed to know so it wasn't until probably two hours later once i finally had an x-ray um the knock, doctor and nurse came in and told me the extent of the injury um, the toughest part was probably that next 24 hours waiting for a surgery just in a like dozing in and out a lot of pain um but once i got through that um you know they told me the surgery went really well and you know all going well i could get back playing rugby and, and live a normal life and they just let me know how, how lucky i was um main reason that the because of the a break, a fracture dislocation. So the vertebrae was broken in two places and that piece that was broken completely dislocated to, you know, moved away. So the, the reason that I was so lucky is that all the neck strengthening and conditioning that I've done over the years. Um, so the muscles in my neck sort of contracted as soon as it knew something wasn't quite right. Um, in which case that broken piece didn't um, touch the spinal cord. So I oh know some people weren't so lucky, so I was pretty fortunate there. The road back, uh, but it wasn't too bad, to be honest. Um, because of that fact that I was, I realised how lucky I was to not be in a worse position. So although I was unfortunate and unlucky to break my neck playing rugby, um, I realised that, that it's not, you know, rugby's fault, it's not. It's just, it's just bad luck, but in the same breath, I felt very lucky. So, yeah, I just took it step by step. Um, uh, the, it was frustrating. I had to have a neck brace on for three months. Um, only allowed to take it off to shower. So sleeping in it too, you can't drive, so you sort of lose your independence a little bit. But once we got out of that three-month period, um, just had a couple of months of just being a normal human, you know, didn't it? wasn't any any rugby training just uh sort of did what i wanted and then also enjoyed the next sort of three or four months of, of building my body back up to get it in the condition to play rugby again yeah. so yeah it's a it's a tough road but it sounds like you kept pretty positive that's it's really admirable the way that you looked at it like it could have been worse um you know you get injured you as you said you i was playing rugby and it was a pure accident you know you could have been a dock worker and you know, get pinched with a you know a, a forklift or something like you were doing something you loved and you were able to come back and you know, attain yourself to the to the highest level again and it's uh you know, that, that, through the process that was one thing i found out like the amount of people um who i talked to who would know someone who has had an unfortunate accident um from people um falling off a trampoline playing with the kids to um, people who are out um, a lot of beaches here in New Zealand, you know, that just going for a swim and a wave picks them up and dumps them the wrong way. Um, all these crazy things. And so if anyone's ever says to me, you know, why would you want to get back playing rugby? Or why would you play rugby? I mean, it's just like the same as any of those examples I just said, you know, there's thing, times when there's freak accidents and it's no one's fault. Things just happen. Um, so, there, you know, it's once I got the medical clearance that my neck was good and strong and technically it should be stronger than it was because I've got two vertebrae that are completely fused together and two stronger than one. So once I got that clearance, um, yeah, I was pretty excited about, about getting back again. It was more a mental hurdle than a physical one. Absolutely. Uh, I'm assuming you worked with like Gilbert and Oka or whatever on the mental strength training and stuff to kind of help you through that and um, make your way back. Um, well, I was in the, the Chiefs flight stage. So the way it works in New Zealand, sort of when you're playing super rugby, you're, look, you're trusted to be looked after by the staff in that rugby club. Um, if you make the All Blacks, then you transition over to their staff. Okay. So... Um, yeah, look, in the early stages, um, everyone from both camps, All Blacks and Chiefs, were keeping in contact, and, and that was really good. Uh, but then once I got up to the stage where I was um, rebuilding myself, I suppose, um, I was in the Chiefs' hands, and they were really awesome. To be fair, I put a 
a lot of credit down to um, Tumbai Matson around getting me back um, in a good space to play. He um, spent quite a few hours with me up on some mats, um, sort of progressing my tackling from, uh, you know, after looking after yourself so carefully for five, six months to just fall over on the ground seems like a big deal. Uh, yeah. And we progressed that over a, about six weeks to stage where we're making a lot of tackles and, um, you know, I'll, I'll thank him big time for helping me get back. That's, that's, uh, that's great. As a fan, it was uh, uh, very exciting to see you back on the pitch again. It was, uh, it was very heartwarming to see that happen and um, thank you for your courageousness to get there. Um, Lachlan, looking at you, uh, I'm looking at, I feel like I'm looking at Captain America from Avengers Infinity War. <laughs> just, just a little bit, I don't know. Um, I read a good quote about you the other day. Um, something about you being the king of turnovers this year. The quote I read, he's got more turnovers than the local bakery, but more modesty than mince pie. Speak to us a little bit about your roles with the flankers. Like, what improvements did you make to get, uh, I guess, that pretty lofty, uh, that lofty uh, praise? Tyler's laughing. I don't know if he's laughing at the quote or the Captain America. <laughs> Sounds like something Tyler would tell you to say. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty nice quote, really. Um, I didn't tell him to say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Probably on my game, um, I think during pre-season, Warren Gatlin sort of said something <clears throat> in one of the team meetings that sort of flicked the switch for me. And um, they were sort of talking about we all work on the things we need to work on, but um, what's your point of difference? And sort of, if there's, as a coach, I sort of look at something, you know, what's your point of difference to sort of get you to play or um, whatnot, and that you should work on that. As, as much as you do on your work on. So I sort of just thought, um, I love my turnovers and getting over the ball. So I thought I'd work extra hard on that this year and um, not probably focus on it more, but just try and get myself in positions where I can sort of be beneficial or, um, you know, help the team out. So just sort of put a little bit more effort into that. And I think it sort of paid dividends um, in some of the games and, um, yeah, just really enjoying it and um, probably over the last couple of seasons I've had a few sort of niggles and little injuries that I've sort of got right over the pre-season so had a pretty good pre-season and um, was feeling really good so I think just a comp, comp, um, bit of everything sort of coming together and um, yeah, sort of just helped my game out this year That's awesome so Gatlin's been a bit of a been helpful with you with that aspect to kind of get your game to the next level. Yeah, uh, he's a really good coach. I think yeah, just different sort of different sort of look um, on the game and just a few little things, you know, just little conversations I've had with him that have sort of helped and um, yeah, I guess just probably coming from the northern hemisphere, just a different sort of maybe um, coaching styles but still sort of similar to um, our old coaches. So, yeah, I think that sort of helped as well. It's great. It's great having uh, knowledgeable coaches that can uh, pick out the little things to make you that much better. Um, so somebody having somebody like Gats there has probably been tremendous benefit for you guys this season. Um, Tyler, the only, the only Canadian, uh, talk to us about growing up in hockey mad country, uh, but, you know, to become one of Canada's best rugby players. Captain Canada. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I didn't really think about rugby when I was. Yeah, sorry. No, I, didn't, uh, I didn't really think much about rugby growing up. Like, I just, I just kind of played. Um, a high school teacher got me involved because it was something to do. I just wanted to play any sport I could. It was either that or lacrosse, and he told me it was a better sport. He gave that a go. So, no, I, I didn't. Really Really, uh, I didn't really like have much much thought about it growing up in in hockey mad Ontario, especially. So uh, I still I still always dreamed about going to the NA and professional ice hockey, but definitely didn't uh, didn't quite have what I, what I needed to get 
there and probably got a little bit bigger than most hockey players now. So, um, and travel all over the world and play now. So it's been, uh, it's been one of the, well, it's been the best thing to ever happen. I, uh, that's, I, I really like that answer. Uh, Sam and Lachlan, is Tyler's picture frozen for you guys too? Yeah. You got that creepy is. little smile on? Oh, there we go. Uh, so yeah, yeah, you had the Ronald McDonald smile frozen there for quite a while. You're looking better though. At least I'm smiling. Our internet's a bit around the world. shitty here. We have to restart it. Um, being a multi-sport athlete is something I fully endorse. Uh, I've always argued that rugby is a great sport here in North America to play in the off season from, you know, hockey or football or basketball um, because it's physical, it's tough, the emphasis on footwork and handwork. What sports did you guys grow, uh, play growing up there in New Zealand? Um, growing up, well, I played tennis and cricket. Yeah, played a little, little bit of soccer or football, but um, just played yeah, tennis and cricket in the summer and then, yeah, just played rugby growing up, so... Yeah, I think it definitely helps sort of playing multiple sports, sort of good for the hand-eye and um, a few new skills. But once you got a bit older, I sort of just focused on rugby and, yeah, just, just playing rugby. Uh, yeah, growing up, I was in a small town and uh, you could pretty much play any sport you wanted and make the top team because there was only one team. So uh, I had a little dabble at everything, but probably the one sport I played right up until my last couple of years at school was was basketball, um, just a really social team. Pretty much the rugby boys switching over and playing basketball. Uh, Tyler, you played hockey. What else? Yeah, I had um, actually when I was going to university, I had to choose between uh, playing rugby or playing volleyball. So those are kind of like the two sports I was deciding to to continue with. But yeah, I played a lot of played a lot of basketball as well growing up. And we've got a we've got a hoop here where I'm staying and. The uh, thirteen-year-old boy I live with, Merrick, he's convinced he's going to the NBA. So we get a lot of a lot of basketball practice in these days. Uh, in Canada, North America, there's a stigma that rugby is, you know, brutally violent sport. Uh, Sam, you kind of talked to about when you know people said, "Why would you go back and play rugby again?" But what do you tell parents when they have concerns about letting their son or daughter play rugby, especially if they think it's going to affect them, um, another uh, like a uh, playing another sport? Like here in Canada, uh, they've taken out contact in our middle school programs, and they won't. They don't actually get into contact rugby until you're in grade nine, so you're about 15 years old. New Zealand, you guys start tackling really early, right? Yeah. Similar, uh, yeah. yeah. Look, I think um, the best thing to and uh, help the safety of rugby is to teach good technique. So we're really fortunate in New Zealand. Like, there's a lot of good coaches going around, and I think that's um, you got to contribute that to the success of so many um, good New Zealand rugby players is some of the early coaching. So I think the earlier that good technique can be taught, the ability to tackle off both shoulders, um, even pass off both hands, things like that, um, lower the, the risk of injury. Uh, you know, and it, of course, because it's a contact sport, there's always going to be um, the odd injury or the like freak accident, like we alluded to earlier. But um, look, I'd probably, if you're not starting contact till you're about 15, when kids are starting to get a little bit bigger and stronger, and they're going in a little bit harder, but without the correct technique, that's probably where there's room for, for a little bit of error. It's not as, it's my opinion, it's not a smart way to introduce contact, but that's, a, that's beyond my hands for sure. Um, all right, so let's, let's get into the quick fire. Let's have a little fun here. So I'm gonna, I've got about 10 or 12 here. I'm just gonna say like a sentence and you have to vote amongst the three of you who this best sit or best fits or the first one's best nickname, all right? So out of us, out of us three. Out of the three of you. Okay. All right. all right, so who has the best nickname? Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing somebody pointing. That's Bobby, yeah. Right. Yeah, Bobby. It's got to be Bobby. What about Beetle or Rat Bait? Those aren't real nicknames. Like, he's referred to as Bobby, and his name's not Bobby. So, Bobby? Yeah, they don't, and those are like, you're, you're 100% Bobby every time. Like, I've never called you Lachlan. His name's Save. His, your, your name is Save as Bobby on my phone. It's just, yeah, Sam. 
All right. So Bobby, best nickname. All right. Who has the most skill? Probably Bobby. Tyler. Tyler? Oh, yeah, let's say Tyler. All right. Who's going to stop a 2 1 1 the first? I push Sam. Sam. What's the question? Go so, well, so in. Who's most likely to stop it? What's the question? So if he's a 2v1. Yeah. And we, are we the one? You're the one. So it's a 2v1. None of us, none of us would be the first yeah, choice in our team. To probably stop. Tyler because he's quickest. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. All right, who's the best tackler? Who's the best tackler then? Sam. Sam's the best tackler? Best tackler? Yeah. Yes, Sam's the best tackler. All right. Who'd be the first to, uh, to do a knock on? Who's got the worst hands? Yeah, probably me. <laughs> <laughs> Who'd be the first? <laughs> He's, he's frozen. <laughs> he is frozen. I'm, I'm, I've been voted more skillful and worse hands now. Is that what I got out of there? Yeah. I've, I've dropped some doozies. <laughs> <laughs> got some doozies. <laughs> Who'd be the first to get carded? <laughs> Probably Tyler. Right? He's had a couple. Yeah, I forgot. I've actually had a decent amount. I've had a good red card as well. So yeah, we'll go you then. But they've been, they haven't been, they've been more like um, team ones. Team right? ones, eh? And you're the last last straw. So that, that doesn't make it better. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> right. you want to get get fumbles, yeah, definitely. Dude. That was terrible. <laughs> that one sucks. That was one of my sickest. It cost us a try, game. too. <laughs> yeah, it did. I almost lost it because of that, didn't we? Who gets in trouble with the coach more? Uh, Barnsley, me. <laughs> Bobby? <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you. And Bobby fights with his dad quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who's the fittest? They save most of their fights for the dinner table, I think, though, so I'm not really sure. <laughs> who's the fittest? Bobby. Bobby. Who, who's, the best at, who's the best at yoga? I hope it's me. Actually, it could be Bobby. He is flexible. That helps his turnovers, too, those hips. Yeah, if he put some time into his yoga, right? Yeah, I'd say naturally Bobby would be better than me. Do you, do you, do you guys have a YouTube channel for yoga? No. No? No. <laughs> no YouTube. Who gets in trouble at the pub more? At the pub? <laughs> probably Bobby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably Bobby. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you. You're getting picked on here, I think, Bobby. <laughs> Who's the best cook? Uh, Not me. Tyler's Tyler, Tyler, pretty good. Yeah, we'll go to your yeah. barbecues, Tyler. Yeah, um, okay. Or you're a slow cooker. Yeah, I like you. I've done some good slow cookers, but Sam's got some good meals too. A lot of years, a lot of the the food bag, you can cook some some good meals out of that. Yeah, I know, but it's not really like I've taught them up myself. I'm just whipping them up. It's taught me some good I've, skills. I've got a lot good, of good my, my cooking's improved over this isolation. I've I've been cooking like six nights a week some nice family meals. So I, I think I might actually take this one now. Oh, well done. That raw pig we had on that hunt. That was <laughs> 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 Who, who's got credit for that one? That's you, Bobby, eh? Some, some raw pig over a fire. I wouldn't believe that. I pretty much half finished the sandwich and they're arguing whether um, you could have pig or pork slightly underdone or not. <laughs> and it was pitch black dark. We couldn't even see. It was pretty good, though. Did the trick. Who has the best taste in music? <clears throat> I'd say we've got similar tastes to music, eh? Tyler's it wouldn't good. be me. I'm pretty much all country music. I don't have much variety in mind. Uh, same, same. Probably similar. our scene. Bobby and I. his records. Oh, that's true, actually. Yeah, that record player goes nice. I'd say Sam. For that. All right, so this one you all, you all get. Right. Who would play you in the Netflix movie of your life? So let's start, with, let's start with Tyler. Who would play you in the Netflix movie of your life? I'm pretty useless at that. I don't really know any like movie stars or anything. I don't watch much. All right. How about you, Sam? 
Um, I'll go Channing Tatum. Is what it? the hell's wrong with this? Okay. Maybe Russell Crowe. I'm going to Crow? say, um, who plays Captain America? Steve Rogers. No, oh, Chris Evans. Chris, Chris <laughs> Evans. We'll take him. All right. <laughs> who would be your leading lady? Margot Robbie. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Tyler, okay. you for this one? Jessica Alba. No. <laughs> oh, that's old school. Tyler, what about you? What is it? Who would be the who would be the lady? Leading lady. Yeah. Can I get Shania Twain to come out of uh, singing <laughs> and go into acting? <laughs> that's like a high school crush, eh? She didn't sing for you. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> she's still got it though, man. She's in her fifties and she's still got it. Who doesn't like Shana Twain? Eh? <laughs> All right, last one. She's got actually she isn't one of her she's got a big house in New Zealand somewhere, I think, from what I from what I've heard. Oh, yeah. Uh, um top of the North Island, I think. Yeah. <laughs> All right, last one. Cops come to break up a party. Who's getting picked up by the cops and who's getting away? Well, that pu- nah, the pub one sort of answers. I'm getting away. No, Bob's getting picked up. <laughs> I'm under a street getting away. I'm no, I was trying cool. to think Bobby would be good at getting away, but after a long chase, they'd pick him up. <laughs> Bobby would have caught something on fire or flipped something. I'd be too pissed to get away. Tyler, yeah, you wouldn't be <laughs> no. 100%. Tyler would probably try and bribe the cops. Uh, it would probably just depend on the day eh, between us three. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's it for the quick fire. One, la- one last thing. Um, hopefully, uh, when I spoke with Tyler last, we were, I was trying to get him to come up with a good rugby story. And he talked about a traveling one to Argentina, but he wouldn't really tell me any, any pub stories. But any good rugby stories that kind of promote camaraderie, and uh, a great reason why, you know, youngsters should join and play the game. Anything come to your mind? I don't know. Like, just, uh, yeah. I suppose just as much as, like, as you enjoy playing the sport, like, the, one of the best parts about it is the, the friendships, for sure. Um, I don't know. I, I can't really comment because I haven't played too many other sports to, like, a, for, for long enough. Um, but... It's, it's the friendships that, like, once we finish playing rugby, that'll continue to be there for years to come. Um, I'm not sure if it's because, like, yeah, go and bash other men together or, like, yeah. Mm. You know, you've got to sort of push yourself to the limits out on the field and you know the guy beside you is doing the same and that sort of grows in mutual respect and bond. But um, look, at the top of my head, I can't think of any great stories, but... Mm. You have some funny moments out on the field where um, you sort of gear each other up. But, um, what, about, what, about, what about like the uh, the integrity of the game? Uh, coming from North America, you know, I grew up playing hockey and, and rugby and stuff. But when you watch most other sports, there's no there's no handshake uh, in Canada right now. Before a minor hockey game, so kids that are aged five to eighteen. They have to shake hands before the game. But in rugby, you can, you know, you spend 80 minutes bashing and battling with somebody, but the game's over, you shake hands, sometimes you exchange jerseys, you know, at different levels, you share, you know, you share drinks with them, stuff like that. Why is it ingrained that it's, that's such an important fabric of rugby, you know, that other sports it seems to elude? I think it's always been like that, eh? Yeah, I think we've got to credit it to like, the players who have gone before us in the, the culture that they've created um, and that's just been passed down the line. Um, it's, it's got to stage where like, players take pride in being able to flick a switch and be, you know, physical and aggressive on the field, but then uh, a good a good person off the field. Um, and I, I think it's got to go back to the men who first started playing the game. I don't know, Tyler, you might be a better yeah. position, uh, having played a few different sports and growing up in not a rugby mad country. Yeah, the game wouldn't, like, it just wouldn't function if, if you treated it like if, you, if people acted like football players in, in North America or like hockey players, because you've got one ref 
really controlling 30 people trying to to play as physical as they can. Whereas if you look at like hockey, they've got what four refs on there for 10 people sort of thing. Like it's completely different that way. The, yeah, I think if, if you didn't have that mutual respect, it's kind of like the laws that govern themselves or something. I don't know how, like probably the best way to describe it. But uh, if, if 15 guys wanted to fight the other 15 guys, there's no way that a ref's going to stop them and it would just ruin the game. So I just don't think the game would function if there wasn't that like level of respect. No, agreed. All right. Well, uh, I appreciate the three of you guys taking some time out uh, of your uh, your schedule to to chat with me and to, you know try and share some rugby thoughts with uh, a lot of Canadian viewers at least. Uh, I got a few over in uh, Europe that listen for sure. But um, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking with the three of you guys. The three of you guys are uh, some heroes to me and uh, heroes to some Canadians back home that watch Super Rugby and and uh, New Zealand play and Canada play. So it's uh, on behalf of all of us, thank you very much for spending some time with me. Really appreciate it, guys. No, thanks, Jamie. Thanks no. for having us. Thanks for having us. Hopefully, uh, yeah, thanks for having rugby all done and dusted and Tyler's settled back in Canada. We'll make our way over there and get to enjoy your guys' beautiful country. That'd be awesome. Cheers, guys. Yeah, always a good cold beer over in Canada. <laughs> And thank you for that, guys. That was that was really awesome. That was a highlight. So massive thanks to Tyler, Sam, and Bobby Lachlan, I guess, for taking the time to chat with us here today over in Canada. Uh, it's great to get, I know this is the Canadian Rock where we focus our content on Canada, but any chance you get uh, some players of the caliber of Sam and, and Lachlan on, I think you jump at it because these guys can only do great things to help improve the game, you know, New Zealand wise, but now internationally and that stuff, uh, you know, can bleed into Canadian rugby as well. When you, when you speak to them about culture and things and, and growing up in that environment, it's, it's great to hear. It's great for the game. Hopefully it'd be awesome. to get these guys on again. Uh, hopefully uh, everybody enjoyed it as much as I did coming up soon. Uh, I chatted with Magali Harvey there, but a week and a half ago, her pod will be up next um, sometime next week. Very, very entertaining, uh, very entertaining young lady, uh, talented, talented athlete, uh, very powerful, graceful runner. Uh, she was uh, she was enjoyable to chat with. And shortly after that, we'll have the McKenzie brothers, Jamie and Phil. They'll be on doing a, a kind of a brother challenge podcast. Um, we're just still lining up the date and time for us to speak. Um, shortly after that, we'll have Jamie Cudmore on as well. And don't forget Connor Trainer. Connor and I are going to chat next week as well. So we've got a few, few good big names lined up to get ready to come on the pod. As always, I want to say a big thank you uh, to the essential workers that have been plugging away through COVID-19, all the support staff and volunteers, anybody that's been working away during the pandemic to try and make everybody safe. I want to put a little plug in. If uh, you follow me on Instagram or any other social media, uh, personally, uh, me, I, I have started along with uh, a bunch of coworkers at school. We're doing a fundraiser for those who were killed in the senseless tragedy in Nova Scotia a couple of weeks back. Uh, there were 22 individuals that were gunned down, and we're raising money through a through a walking event. Um, so if you see that on any of the social media accounts, please make a donation. All money is being donated through to the Red Cross, and then all the money gets directly. Uh, sent out to those families so if you can if you can jump on and help out that would truly be appreciated uh, again thanks to ben sound music as always who supply our tunes if you have any topic requests you just want to chat you want to get some thoughts out please let me know as always this is jamie gray signing off until next time stay safe stay healthy stay sane and keep on rocking <laughs>